Yes. John, could you elaborate some on your conversations with the McGuire family and development of the Thank you. Well, I, um, I was sent a picture and never even looked at who sent it to me because when I saw the picture, I was like, like it hit me right between the eyes when I saw it. Um, I had to find out later because I went to the coffee shop. Which one of you guys sent me this? My step was ended up being Mark Hill. I don't know where he found it or where he saw it. So um, when we put it out, we got business owner. I mean, you know. So I called when we found out who it was. Um, I called and it was uh, we had Molly McGuire's name. So what do you think my first question was? Did you marry the guy so your name could be Molly McGuire? <laughs> um, but we talked for a while. And what I got, because you guys are looking at it as though, here's a guy, and we know the power of basketball in our state. We all know. You, you saw it when I went out this summer, and you, you see it. But my thought was that's what this was about. He wanted to be there so bad that he was willing to leave without shower, without change, just get in his car and go because he got out of the mine late. One about that is that he wanted to be there with his son. That's why he did. So you're talking about a minor, and I've, I've said my family, I called my dad today. I said, Clarksburg? He said, it was Clarksburg. It might have been Shin, Shin Town, where my grandfather worked. And, um, and Molly's comment to me is, my husband is humble. He's hardworking. This is hard work, but he makes enough being there that I don't have to work. And he's a great father. He's done this many times. She said, do you know his beard is red? I said, what do you mean? He said, that was cold dust in his beard. And so um, I said, well, what did he say? He hadn't heard you. What? He's still underground. What? So then I called back after he got back home, and, and it was, they called me to the office. Now, first of all, I thought I did something. And I come out there cheering me. What are you people doing? But here's what it is for me. You guys know me. I, for two years, I couldn't go anywhere. We were COVID. Couldn't be out. Couldn't. Just awful for everything. But that, I've done some things that's been, that have been fulfilling for my wife and I. But this you'd have to say you're bringing light to a good man, a hard-working Kentuckian, a coal miner who does everything he can to make time for his family and his son and his daughter. Come on. That's what it ends up being. That's the story. And, um, and then it just went crazy, went viral. Now, I'm saying to you, you got hotels calling, we want to put them up. You got restaurants calling, we want to feed them dinner. You had a car dealership, call them, we'll give you a car to drive out. Think about this. And isn't it neat for someone like that who's a quiet, humble guy to know? Well, people appreciate you, and we appreciate what you stand for. And I appreciate it because it's how my family got their start in this country. The American dream started in the coal mine in Clarksburg, West Virginia. Now, backbreaking work, yes. So the, the other comment, I went underground in West Kentucky, and I believe I went underground in that mine he was in. So, you know, the mine, there were parts of it that were five, six feet high, seven feet high, and then there were parts of it that were like three feet high. And I said, well, how, what, to, you know, what? Well, they said, it's a duck walk. What? So I looked at the guy and I said, what, what if, you, do you go up to have lunch? Do you, you know, go to the bathroom? You go, 
And that's when the guy, I can't remember his name, but he looked like John Wayne. We go down together and we come out together or up together. And I put it on, when I got back, I put it on my team's wall and just said, guys, this is us. You know why they hold each other accountable? Do you have to have the manager down there or do they hold each other accountable? It's life or death. If you're not pulling your weight, someone's going to say something. If you're not ready to be there, one of the other minors will say something. That's when a team is empowered. And I talk to my guys about it. And, and you know, it's just a, a great lesson. And I, and I showed them the picture yesterday of Michael and his son. And I talked about hard back-breaking work that's honorable work, that, but he makes time for his son. Even when he knew he couldn't shower, he wouldn't matter what he looked like. He just wanted to be with his son. So, believe me, it hit home as soon as I saw it. Within five minutes, I called TJ in and I said, let's go, we got this one here. I'm taking care of this guy and his family. So that's the whole story. And I'm sticking with it. <laughs> John, I hate to bring this up, but I'll get it out of the way, first of all. They, they say that uh, those who ignore history are doomed to repeat it. What happened against St. Peter's? And more importantly, what, <laughs> what, what are you doing this year to make only, sure it doesn't happen again? <laughs> and more importantly, what are you doing Once this year? To make sure? <laughs> Hey, I tried, but uh, what are you doing to make sure it doesn't happen again? Can't do anything to make sure it doesn't happen again. You coach a team and you play a game. You know what's great? In that game, I, that team was like my UMass teams. Undersized, tough as nails, veteran team, more skilled than you thought. Could have been in the Final Four. Almost made it to the Final Four. You play a team like that in a one-game shot, stuff can happen. It's happened to just about every coach you know. So my thing was, what can you do? The kids got crushed. I was worried about them going in a dark place. And some of them were in a bad place that I had to send guys home to be with families. And it's the crush that came from that they had to deal with. So for me, was more, okay, how do I get these guys right? And then you use it as fuel. How are you going to guarantee it doesn't happen again? I'm going to guarantee it. I can't guarantee it. I will tell you, we have a great group of guys who are great teammates that pick each other up, that challenge each other. And let me say this. That gives you a chance. The other means you're failing. Forget about postseason, you're not making it. This team is together, um, talented. I was just with John White Brown today for an hour. And, and I'll give you two stories that are kind of like the dentist, okay? <laughs> so here are the two stories. One, John White Brown, we go for an hour, okay? And we're talking, he's telling stories. I'm hearing about Kentucky Fried Chicken, the Celtics, unbelievable mind. And, and then as I leave the room, he says, make sure you have three-point shooters. <laughs> I mean, that, so we have the women's clinic. 500 women come in, all excited, working, the kids are working them out. And doing. One lady gets up and says, the stuff you're doing, the character you're teaching, all that stuff, winning and losing, coach, you don't have to win another game by what you do to teach these kids. And then two other women say, yeah, but we want number nine, coach. <laughs> it matters, we know it matters. And because basketball here carries weight like it did in Pikeville. Now, that was a scrimmage. It wasn't even a 40 minute scrimmage, it was 30. 7,000 people paid, paid to watch the team and then stayed after to get autographs and pictures. That's what this team means. We know if you coach here and play here, what it means. Now here's the thing I'm telling you. 
I'm, I'll say this word to you people, but my players will never hear it out of my mouth. Bob Rotella comes in, our sports psychologist. He never, we're not talking championship. We're talking playing against ourselves and how good can we be. When your best player, Oscar Shibwe, is in the Bahamas in a fifth leading scorer and is cheering harder for his teammates than anyone else, means you got a chance. And so we're talking about how do we become our best by every day playing against yesterday's performance? How do we, how do we get better? How do we get more consistent? We just played that scrimmage, I watched the tape, we stink defensively. What do you think we did yesterday, the whole practice? Wow. What do you think we're doing today and tomorrow? Defense. Because, and I told them, and I told some individuals, look, if you want to play, if you think you're going to play, you're not playing. You won't play. And then I told them, you know how many guys I have to play? Does anybody know here how many to feel the team to play? There you go. There's five. I said, I only got to play five guys. And I've done that before. So if more of you want to play, you better defend. If you think you're avoiding contact because you, you want to shoot balls, you're not. So we got a lot of work to do to be our best. And that gives you the best chance to go and do what you're trying to do. Not worry about you have to do this. You know what that's like? You got to win the lottery, coach. You got to hit the lottery now. Okay. How many of you play the lottery? You do when it gets over 500 million. 100 million is not enough for you to play. <laughs> you're all laughing because you're saying it's true. Yes. Cal, the uh, veteran aspect of this team, how has that changed early practices? Does it allow you to move through more quickly than the past? The two things are Bahamas and veteran. So the way I coach when I have veteran teams, it's here's the drill, watch them, now go in and do it. And you don't have to break the whole thing down, you're watching. We are ahead offensively and we're behind defensively. And we, you saw it in that game. I mean, we played together, we low turnovers, we did it down the bottom. We're ahead offensively. And so now I'm like, okay, now we got to get this defense right. Our pick and roll defense was so bad, it's like we never taught it. Um, play, players played their man, and when they were off the ball, they turned, it turned. Was, it was awful. But by having veteran guys, they know and they can talk. One of the veterans talked to one of the young kids that had a tough game. He met him in the hallway. This is what's great about having great kids, and said, "Look, you got to put this behind you now." and you worry about tomorrow, you do not worry about what just happened. You go have a great night's sleep. Stuff like this happens when you're playing here because every game is a Super Bowl for someone. This is the biggest thing in everybody's city that we go. And so it's nice to have veterans that can say, I've been through it. I guess Jacob will always be a free spirit, so there seems to be a new maturity level with him. Um, what? Jacob Toppin, he's, he's free spirit, seems to be a more a maturity level. He's, he's growing up some and realizing what the truth is in front of him. Yeah, he, um, um, he went from being like 13 to he's about 16. <laughs> but he is in the gym, he's become the gym rat. And every time I've had the guy like that, that guy breaks through. Now his thing is going to be physical play. If you avoid everything and you flip balls, I mean, you're going to play, but you can't be a significant guy. And he rebounding in traffic, uh, playing defense off the ball, all the stuff, you're not hiding. The greatest thing about the tape, it never lies. You see it? and. Some of the stuff we put on tape yesterday, it really, the room was cracking up because some of the guys did some stuff like, oh my God, 
And then I called it the cat one. Walking around like a cat. Like versus bouncing and playing. I called this is the cat. And we played it, you played over and over and over, and the whole crook room was cracking up. It, again, you can't, this thing is me holding them accountable, them holding each other accountable, uh, and going from there. Cal, are you surprised the team is a little bit behind defensively, or is it just kind of part of where it is? Well, let me say this. Oscar didn't play, Lance didn't play, and Sabir didn't play. The problem is there are guys that I'm planning on playing that were so bad defensively that you're like, dude, you, you, you know you're not playing, right? And it's okay, I love you. You can stay at the house, I'll make you breakfast. You're just not playing. And so I think they get it. Look, we got a, we got a good group. We do. But, you know, anytime I, you think they know, you're making a mistake. You think they're ready, they're not. Like we, we, we haven't done any zone stuff yet. Like none. No zone stuff. You know people are going to play a zone. It's one of the ways they got to play. The good news is we can shoot. We've got a bunch of guys that can shoot threes. So. Cal has moved up the, the timeline with the way you've seen him play in the summer. And, and offensively, the I mean. offensively, he was really good. And what he's behind some of the other guys. But so was Shea. So you can take it from Shea or Emmanuel quickly, and every time you perform, you prove you should be playing, or you know you don't. Now, a do, like I said, it's all the other stuff. The biggest thing he did is he made jump shots, which he hasn't made, but he's made them in that. And I told him I was proud of him. And he went in with an attitude that I'm going at dudes, and he did, and he's physically able to do it. He's still growing. I mean, how about Ugana? Both of them. You look at Ugana, it's a seven footer, and you say, wow, he can run, he's skilled. Wait a minute. Unsure of himself. You know, I'm having to talk to the kids about self talk. You know, again, the, 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 you, you look at them and, well, these are grown men. They should know they got to do this, and they got, they're grown men, and why they better expect what, what, what they're. they're yeah, they may be big, but they are who they are. I'm talking about self-talk. What are you saying to yourself? If you're not your biggest cheerleader, you're done here. And the only way you can do that and be honest about it, look in the mirror and know you're not BSing yourself, is get in that gym. And then you think you deserve it. But Adu, Ugana, how about uh, Brendan and how he's playing? You know, here's a walk-on that um, has been here and done, he can play like four positions. So he's been he's been doing good too. John, he like got a more jump shots. Got a more jump shots in the New York game than maybe all of last year. And it was a quick shoot, catch and release with confidence. Is that something you've seen that's been growing in him? He's getting better. He's getting more confident. He's uh, you know he's uh, more self disciplined. He's doing stuff that he needs to do. So I'm, uh, I'm pleased with him. And again, shot blocking is a big part of this. So he blocks shots. That's what I'm telling Jacob. You should be blocking shots. You know, that's a big part of what we do. What's the significance of CJ playing as long as he did the good wide? Like nothing ever happened. Um, he did good. He did good. And, and I had to stop him about 10 days ago because it seemed like he was pressing. And I said, all right, guys, when he shoots it, how many do you think it's going in? The whole team raised their hand. I said, so are you hearing? Like, we're all good with you, but you haven't played for a year and a half. It's going to take time. I just talked to Jamal Murray. Jamal, don't expect this to happen overnight. You've been out of here. So now when you start playing, it may take a month. So what? And hopefully that lightened the load for him because he shot the ball in the scrimmage. And I'll tell you what else he does. He's an unbelievable teammate to lead. Telling guys, pass the ball. Just pass it. We'll get it back to you. Move the ball. And he does it in a good way. He also defended pretty good in that scrimmage, which is what I told you. So 
Um, it's just nice to see him. And I, you got to be happy for him. You think about it. Been out a year and a half. And it's been freak injuries. Like in the layup line, then he got hurt on a breakaway layup here, and we thought it was going to be a long, thank goodness it was like a three-day thing. But when he hit the ground, we thought he was out for a while. And I'm like, this kid's bad luck. What? And it wasn't. So, But he's, he's, he's driven, he's wired, and he's another veteran. Antonio, another veteran. John, you mentioned Antonio there, but what were the qualities that you identified with him when you decided to bring in, bring him into the program, and have you seen that manifest over some games now? Yeah, he's. We brought him in to make baskets, kind of like we did with Kelly, um, and he he shoots it, uh, and he can make baskets. He doesn't. He used to mess with the ball, you know. Now it's downhill running, it's driving through catches and getting in the lane. He bodies instead of trying to avoid everything and flip and throw. So, you know, that was one of my things to the team. If you're never drawing a foul, yet you're driving, probably playing you too many minutes. You, you gotta get to the foul line on somebody, or dunk on somebody. Don't avoid everything and flip. So, he's gotten so much better. And he doesn't say a whole lot. He talks on the court, but he's a quiet kid. And um, he doesn't get my jokes yet, so sometimes he's looking. <laughs> You know, say something funny, and he's like, uh, "Am I supposed to laugh here? I don't know if I want to laugh." <laughs> but he's a great kid. He really is, and he's—it's nice coaching some older guys. But also, you got Kaysen and 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 Chris, who may be young, but they're physically advanced. They both are. Um, both been doing real good too. You mentioned Ugana. What has he surprised you in any way over the past couple of months? Anything you thought you weren't getting that, that he has? And what, what is his pathway to meaningful minutes this season? Well, the first thing that makes it hard is you're playing behind National Player of the Year. National Player of the Year in every every award, unanimous, which happened like 47 years ago. So you're playing behind that guy, which means when you get in, you've got to perform. And um, you also got Lance, who's been out, who's been hurt for 10 days or so. But you got him, and what's Lance do? I asked Lance the game weight. I said, I want you up to 240. He's at 233. He was at 217 last year. So now all of a sudden, you got Lance more physical and able to hold his position. He makes it hard. You got Damian at 611 and long, and you got Jacob. So you got a lot of guys there. But who does what he does? No one. And that's why you just, you're going to get your minutes. You force me to play you more. So, um, but he's good and a great kid. And a great kid. But he's, he's overwhelmed with how hard this is. You know, we always tell him, you're going to see, and I got the And then it's like, you know, and trying to get him to understand that self-talk. You can either say, I can't do this, this is so hard, or you say, I love this. I'm uncomfortable, but that's what I want to be. I'm, I'm loving this. I didn't think I could ever do this, and I'm doing it. Then you come back tomorrow, and you want to go again. Or, oh, I can't do this. guy's right. Uh, he's nuts. He's doing it. Yeah. Well, how are you going to practice tomorrow? You're walking on. What's your other uh, Self-talk matters. You know, especially when you're being challenged in things you've never been able to do before, or you don't think you could do, and you do it. And take it one of two ways, make a negative or make a positive. And your self-talk is what it is. Building confidence is part of that, but you've got to build your own too. Letting guys know that I want you to play aggressively, you're going to make some turnovers. I'm not taking guys out for missed shots. What do I take guys out for? Yes, defense. Not shooting when you're wide open because you don't think you're going to make it, then you can't be in the game. Shoot open shots. You come out when you pass up open shots. You go 0 for 8. That's on me because I left you in. <laughs> now you'll probably be out before you get to 0 for 8. But Calvin, you've been a point guard for the second year. It seems like you have kind of a, a special connection with those guys. And they, they kind of know how you have the team run and all those things. Have you seen that develop with, with Wheeler? And, and what does he mean? The other thing is we got 
Tyler Yulvis, who's rehabbing and taking some courses in the gym with us, watching and, and helping there too. But um, yeah, he's he's way better. Um, and now, you know, he's just got to, what I want to be able to, and I told him, if, if I know, if we back up the defense for him, it hurts him. If he's got to play a guy from the top of the key and in, it hurts him because it shows some of what he isn't, 6'5". But when you pick up and you're disruptive in the full court and we give you space to be disruptive in the pick and roll, all of a sudden, and your speed, and now all of a sudden you're shooting the ball better, um, I told him, you got to be guarded. You can't be a player out there that's not being guarded or you won't be in. So you got to be guarded. They got to respect you and your shot. Uh, and he knows that. And he's in the gym. I just looked today. He was in there shooting and getting a workout in. The guys, we got guys spending time in the gym. I can say that. John, is there, is there one area that you're going to keep your eye on as the season progresses and say, we got to get better in this area to reach our potential? Biggest thing right now, again, is defense. Is that team defense or individual Both. But, but, well, here's what I'm saying. We got guys, if they're playing the ball, they're good. The minute the ball is passed, they're no part of helping. They're standing, they're back. And you would say part of it is they get tired, and then they just let go of the rope. But you won't believe this. They don't let go of the rope on offense. They'll still run and go get it and go. They just seem to let go of the thing on defense. Um, so, but I, I'm not... To be, uh, I'm not concerned because I'm, I know what I'll do. The guys that are really guarding will be in there. Um, the guys that aren't guarding, when they get beat a few times, they'll know the teammates will be on them. I remember the one year I said, we won't sub if you hold them under six points. If you hold them at six or less, we won't sub. Well, they fought. To, and if someone gave up a basket, they are dude, guard your man. Help us here. You know, and so that empowers them. We've got that kind of group. Two more questions. John, I know you don't pay a whole lot of attention to social media. You, you've got a lot of supporters out there, but you also have some haters. They you know, say you can't coach and you lost your mojo, uh, all that stuff. Uh, you seem energized. Why are, all you, why are you guys all, it's amazing, but why are you laughing? <laughs> Shouldn't be laughing. He's allowed to ask questions like that. I don't pay attention to it. <laughs> How, no, seriously, you look I'm energized. Serious. You look energized. How, how much of your excitement? Because I don't listen to that. I just don't listen to it. I mean, how I do this and preparing kids. And someone said, well, when will you stop? And I, I said, I'd like to help about 20 more families before I'm done. You may not look. See, some will say, if you've got to win this game and that game, and if you don't win that, I'm about helping families. They'll be about winning when they know I'm for them. And so my job is to have their back. Their job is to have each other's back. And at the end of the day, 50 years from now, people can look back. And I hope 50 years from now, they're talking about the McClendon Initiative. I hope they're talking about Michael. I hope they're talking about stuff with the federal workers or tele. I hope they're talking about all that and then what we did on the court, which is pretty good. We've had a couple years of COVID. It's behind us. Let's go. Um, but if someone said, when people say certain things, I, you know what I normally, I agree. Can we move on now? <laughs> I agree. Can we move on? I'm, yeah, I'm not going to get them back and forth. But anybody, I want another tough question. Is this media day or coaches day? I don't know if this is a tough question, but you've talked a lot about freshmen and kind of their learning curve. Do you feel like you have to count on that group of freshmen more this year than the group of freshmen last year? Anytime I've had veterans and freshmen that really contribute, we've had really good teams. So that's what I'm hoping this becomes. But we got the freshmen got a long way to go. Kaysen is probably a little more advanced. And here, here's the thing with Kaysen. He's played all point. 
because it's only him and Severe. I can put Antonio at point, which I did in the scrimmage, and he did pretty good. The problem is, whoever you put at the other point guard isn't the threat to score as much off the ball as you are on the ball. So I think what you'll see with Kaysen, I literally haven't played him off the ball since we started. I mean, I, he's been the other guy, and uh, but we'll start some. But he's, it's important, those guys and what they'll do uh, and what they physically can do and what they expect to do, um, all pretty good stuff. What's the timetable for Oscar now? I don't know, but it's, you know, he's moving pretty good. He's moving around. He's got to stay off his feet. You know, the kid, you know, will stand and sign autographs, take pictures. We got to stay off his feet. So when he trains, it may swell a little bit, but it'll go away. And, you know, <clears> for the time being, that's what it is. So training, it'll swell a little bit and it'll go away. And, uh, but he's telling me, he says, I feel really good. My leg feels good. I don't have the same, you know, the pain that was there. He said, it wasn't much, but there's nothing now. And it's more that he's got to go through it. But he's, uh, you know, my thing is, let's, you know, we're not going to hold him back, but you're not going to push him forward either. You know, and his pace and timing may be different than someone else. Someone else may be longer, someone else may be shorter. I don't know. But I do know he's 252 pounds. He's big. 7% body fat on top of him. But. Captain Sim John White made sure to think all, all the fans do about have enough shooters. We talked about CJ and Antonio. Do you feel like you have that? Do you feel like you have all the all the shot making, not just shooters, but makers? I, I, well, you, look, you can't. I just read somebody. Somebody just lost the game and just said we had all kind of looks. They just didn't drop. That stuff happens in the sport. But I thought we had pretty good shooters last year and led the league in three point shooting for a while and. And I think this team can, they're good shooters, but we need a, makers. We need makers more than they just need, need guys who will shoot. But we got, I like the group. I like the guard play. I like the wing play. I like the big guys. We're doing it without Oscar right now. Um, you put Oscar in, it makes it a little bit different. Um, what, what will happen is, where they'll expect him to rebound right now, they're having to go get balls, which is a good thing. But we're better with them. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, folks. Thank you.